the minute that you understand that you can poke life and actually something will, you know, if you push in, something will pop out the other side, that you can, you can change it, you can mold it. That's maybe the most important thing is to shake off this uh, erroneous notion that life is, is there and you're just going to live in it versus embrace it, change it, improve it, make your mark upon it. Once you learn that, you'll never be the same again. I think about what Steve said all the time. He's right, but how do you reconcile what he just said with the fact that in a society of any size, the nail that sticks out gets hammered down? How do you stand out and make a difference without being cast out of the island? You have to stand out the right way. And that's what we're talking about today. Let's get started. Thor Ragnarok is one of my favorite Marvel movies, and it's easy to see why. I choose to run toward my problems and not away from them. That's what. Thor is full of these kinds of unusual bits of humor, and that's why it's one of the highest rated Marvel movies of all time. When you want to do something new, it fundamentally means you have to make a break with tradition, how things were done in the past. Here's director and auteur Taika Waititi, the director of Ragnarok, on starting out early. I was told by the older generation of filmmakers, and now I realize I shouldn't have listened to them in the first, <laughs> with my first short films and stuff. Instinctively knew I wanted to do a certain thing in, in the film, but I was convinced by, by people who had more experience not to do them and to, do, to edit things in a certain way. And then, only like a year or two later, I like, realized, like, damn, I was right. I want you to really notice what he said there, that he started off making short films with an idea of what he wanted. But immediately, the traditionalists said no. And that's the rub. You can't just do what other people do and expect to get ahead. You have to be different. And sometimes that thing is precisely the thing other people say, do not do. Hip hop is a key piece of American culture now, and today it's actually hard to imagine a time when that wasn't true. Rick Rubin, the producer, he was one of the key people to produce this new sound, and this is what it was like to be right there when things were brand new. I just loved the music. I would buy every 12 inch single that would come out when it would come out, and none of them sounded like what it sounded like at the club. It wasn't, it wasn't related at all. Live, it was much more of a raw, it was like DJs and breakbeats, and it, it was harder. Whereas the record sounded more like an R&B record, but with somebody rapping on it. What we know as rap today, that's not what those records sounded like. So I started making hip hop records really with the idea of, I just wanted as a fan to hear what it sounded like in a club. So it was more almost like a documentarian style. You mm. know? Part of it was because I didn't know what I was doing. I didn't have any um, training or skill, but that was what allowed it to be new was it wasn't doing it the regular way. Rick Rubin could feel the energy in the clubs in New York City listening to early hip hop and hip hop artists. And that was the magic he tried to bring into the music when he was producing it. So other people would feel that way too. Just like YTT, Ruben had to go with something a little bit different. The philosopher Osho says, creativity is the greatest rebellion in existence. If you wanna create, you have to get rid of all conditionings. Otherwise your creativity will be nothing but copying. It will just be a carbon copy. You can be creative only if you are an individual. You cannot create as a part of the mob psychology. The mob psychology is uncreative. It lives a dragging life. It knows no dance, no song, no joy. It is mechanical. Rick Rubin didn't make a hip hop sound that sounded like all the other things people were doing. He had to break with the mob psychology. And it is in that rebellion, he helped create a new sound for a generation. 
So if we break with tradition and we don't copy others, does that mean we should do any random thing with no regard to what came before you? Absolutely not. If you look deeper, Waititi and Rubin were both deep studies of their predecessors. If you think they were born with the goods, think again. Every master begins as a student. In Aikido, there's a concept called Shu Ha Ri. There are three stages. Shu, follow the rules. Ha, break the rules. And Ri, make the rules. Aikido master Endo Shesiro Shihan stated, in Shu, we repeat the forms and disciplines ourselves so that our bodies absorb the forms that our forebears created. We remain faithful to these norms with no deviation. Next, in the stage of Ha, once we have disciplined ourselves to acquire the forms and movements, we make innovations. In this process, the forms may be broken and discarded. Finally, in Ri, we completely depart from the forms, open the door to creative technique, and arrive in a place where we act in accordance with what our heart and mind desires, unhindered, while not overstepping laws. Shu, ha, ri. This is a cycle that we repeat over and over again. In software, we love talking about iteration, but the reality is that we can always make it better. By applying this method, Waititi and Rubin, conscious or not of it, reached a stage of true creativity and innovation, where they were able to create works that were truly original and forward-thinking. Waititi was able to blend humor, emotion, and imagination in a way that's both entertaining and thought-provoking. For Rubin, he produced music that is raw, emotional, and groundbreaking. They both progressed from imitation and adherence to established rules, to experimentation and adaptation, to true creativity and innovation. Bruce Lee says, Learning is definitely not a mere imitation or the ability to accumulate and conform to fixed knowledge. Learning is a constant process of discovery and a never a concluding one. Not only is this the key to iteration, it's actually the key to mastery, being able to go from novice to world expert. Robert Greene says, Mastery is not a function of genius or talent. It is a function of time and intense focus applied to a particular field of knowledge. Don't be different for different sake. Build on what is there, but don't settle for just being the same as what you've already found. That's it for this week. I'll see you next week.